peu. Parler français. Parler français, euh, français un peu. Un petit peu. Un petit peu. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hello, uh, my name is Pittsburgh Pat, and I'm here with Gramicus. Hi, everyone. Gramicus Pat, artist. Thank you for having me. And what else do you call yourself other than just an artist? Sexy. Oh, hey, <laughs> damn sexy. <laughs> oh, my God, we said we weren't going to swear. <laughs> <laughs> I broke my own rule. Gotta get we'll, out of the way. We'll cut that out in post. <laughs> so we're having a conversation. Now, we've met already. We met at a uh, lecture at the Allegheny Observatory. That's right. Yeah. Because you're really interested in outer space. I am. I love outer space. Yeah, me too. I love outer space. In fact, we kind of bonded, or at least like when we first met each other, we were talking and you were talking about... Um, space themes. You were talking about your bravery, mm -hmm. um, uh, handkerchief and uh, bandana, bravery bandana, adventure bandana. Actually, this is the bravery version. There's gonna be multiple versions. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got it. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I learned, and uh, and I showed you my website, and there was a star field in the background, yeah. and you were like, oh wow. And then we were talking about positivity and the universe is on my side. The universe, the universe wants you to succeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, it sounds like we have a lot of similar. Thoughts along those mm -hmm. lines. Yep, like wearing blue shirts. And, uh, blue shirts are always good. <laughs> yeah. Everybody looks good in blue. <laughs> so, um, so what got you interested in outer space? Is well, I'm gonna go there someday. Oh, you're gonna go? I'm gonna go. Oh, okay, cool. Is safely. It gonna be like, safely. Safely. So it's gonna be like a touristy kind of thing, or there's so many options. Um, and uh, yeah, so. Thanks for calling me Gramicus. That's my favorite nickname. It was given to me. Uh, and Gramicus like Copernicus for all you spacies out there. And um, otherwise you can just call me Graham. <laughs> and um, but don't call me late for Danishes. Oh. Uh, and don't call me Shirley. No. <laughs> I love airplane movies. Yes, slapstick yeah, humor is like right up my own. Fantastic. Clue? Did you ever see Top Secret? Oh, Clue, absolutely. Clue, Top yeah. Secret. Running from room to room, <laughs> sliding across the wood floor. Run down the hall and <laughs> stop the cook. Yeah, yeah. Well, Tim Curry is a tour de force. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, and excuse me, space. Space. Uh, so I have moved a couple places. I've moved for school. Mm hmm. I moved for a job, mm -hmm. and then uh, moving to Pittsburgh, it was location, location, location. But prior to Pittsburgh, I was living in a city called Huntsville, Alabama. Sure. You're familiar? I've heard of it. I haven't been there. Mm -hmm. But didn't they have something to do with the space program? Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. So kind of if you condense it, there was Houston, there was Cape Canaveral, and then there was Huntsville. So Huntsville was where all the um, engineering was happening, mm -hmm. all the brain power. And I moved there to work at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, home of Space Camp. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's pretty amazing. So I was not into space at all prior to moving there. But I was listening to the Star Talk podcast, mm -hmm. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Mm -hmm. Neil, if you're watching this, big fan. Uh, <laughs> and, Send me um, an autograph picture. <laughs> uh, he had featured these guys called the Rocket City Rednecks. Have you heard of them? No. So essentially, it's kind of like where big brain rocket science engineering meets hillbilly uh, slap it together. Kind yeah, of sure. And um, this gentleman, his name is uh, Travis Taylor, and he was on the podcast, and he lives and works in Huntsville, Alabama. Okay. And he was talking about the U.S. Space and Rocket Center and NASA, and I was just really inspired, and I thought, you know what, that sounds like a lot of fun. And so I applied for a job. I did a Skype interview, and they hired me. <laughs> I moved wow. on to Alabama. See that? See that? You can dream about these things. You can even do it from your couch. <laughs> and you can make these things happen, right? Yeah. I mean, like, that's the thing now. We can reach out to, like, uh, without getting too mystical, but we can reach out to the universe. We can reach out to the interwebs. We can reach out to people now in a way that we couldn't do even 10 years ago. And we can get jobs, you know, and we can like make connections and we can talk to people. That's sort of what this podcast is all about. But um, yeah, it's fantastic. So tell me about your experience there. 10 out of 10. Wow. 11 out of 10. Wow. Dare I say. Yeah. Are you ready for this? Yeah, tell me. I rode in an astronaut's Porsche. 
Is that like the actual official car of astronauts and fighter pilots? Ooh. Because it seems like there's a lot of that. I just saw the end of the new Top Gun and there's a Porsche in there. Is there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. It just seems par for the course that it's like fast planes, you got fast, cars. fast cars. Yeah. Sure. I mean, it would be boring. You know, <laughs> you're like running or touring around. Chevy like, Apollo. Yeah. <laughs> and meanwhile, you're like, I always like rocking the atmosphere. I'm like a comet, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. So. 11 out of 10 experience. I mean, really big shout out to my bosses. Um, Chris Morato, Bridget Stone, Katie Anderson, everyone else. Oh, Ron Newton. He knows who he is. Um, he uh, and all my other bosses, they extended such a gift to me, which uh, was essentially just their faith in, in my uh, people skills. I was a museum presenter, so I got to present to the public. I got to present to... Um, uh, tourists, it's the number one tourist attraction in Alabama, um, field trips, so little kids, high school students, people in college, engineers, so like I was telling people who were way smarter than me about the history and so that was really cool and then I got to work with astronauts and other people in NASA and like I said, 11 out of 10 because um, I was given the gift of my boss's faith and for that I'm forever grateful. Isn't it neat though how like you mentioned like talking to people that are really intelligent, right? And I've had the, the pleasure of doing that on the show. I, I believe I'm doing that now. But what's really cool is that we are intelligent, but we know different things, right? So like, you know, you're talking to somebody who knows something about engineering a spaceship, but you might be able to impart some knowledge on, to, on them that they don't know, right? So you may be well versed in the history of like the Apollo program or something of that nature. And you can fill them in on that, you know? And it's, it's, that's what I love, is the exchange of ideas, you know? It's not like, well, you know, this person's so above me. It's like, you know, people are people. And, you know, even astronauts, even people who have, like, had the, the privilege and uh, the training to, like, travel into outer space. I mean, they're, it, it, you know, they put their, you know, pants on one leg at a time, or their spacesuit one leg at a time, <laughs> and uh, just the way we would do it, right? So, it's really great, though, and it's really wonderful because I, I get the feeling that everybody I've talked to who has had anything to do with the space program or or astronauts, that everybody there's there's to to a person, they are just so giving of that experience, like they want to talk about that experience with others and share mm -hmm. it. So it's such an amazing thing. Yeah, and I'm glad you said that because that's why I want to go to space is. Not really for me, but so that I can take something from out there and give it back to people, you know. And um, working at the Rocket Center, I got to attend some alumni uh, induction dinners. So people who've graduated Space Camp who then get inducted into the Hall of Fame, they'll have a alumni dinner. And are you familiar with the Mercury 13? No. So there's a Mercury 7. Um, the uh, test pilots who were the first Americans... Um, to ride on the rockets, they were all men. So the Mercury 13 was a subdivision of that. I don't think it was ever officially endorsed. It was more kind of like an experiment and it was 13 women. And so one of those women, her name is Wally Funk, and she was part of this group of women who never got to go into space, but did all the same training and even exceeded the training of the men she was inducted into the Space Camp Hall of Fame, and she has since flown into outer space. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. Can you believe that? Yes, I absolutely can believe so, that. So the, the lecture that we were talking about is hosted by someone who's been on this podcast, Dan Turnstrecheck, and she's a sci-fi writer, but also an astronomer. She has advanced degrees, but she one of the things that's, I mean, she's fascinating in so many ways, but one of the things that is really great is her story about how she went to the Utah desert and spent two weeks in a Mars simulator. Like, like they weren't allowed. They were, they had radio contact. There was a delay. Um, you know, like they, they simulate the whole thing. Like you guys are out there with your equipment and that's it. And we'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> and like they're living in tubes. And when they went outside of the, the shelter, they had to put spacesuits on and she injured herself apparently like on one of the first days and didn't, say anything because she didn't want to be like taken out oh of the of the simulation like she'll tell you that whole story but it's yeah it's really amazing to meet people that you know 
and shake their hand and talk to them. But the people have done things where I'm like, wow, I would love to do that. Yeah. Like, she got to ride in like a uh, uh, G4 simulator, you know, to think of rah, 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 James Bond got stuck on. And, <laughs> and, like, uh, yeah, like, and she did like, you know, they're like astronaut level Gs, like to see what norm, so-called normal people would experience because there's going to be space tourism, right? There's going to be like, you know, at some point, probably in our lifetimes, if, you know, I don't know if it'll ever come down in price where it's affordable to do, but, um, you know, for me, but it's possible that like, you know, you just say like, hey man, I'm going to mortgage the house and I'm going to go into space, you know? And, uh, you know, so it's doable. And uh, who knows, maybe it'll come down below the price of a car or something. But, uh, it, 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 you know, so they want to know what is going to happen to, like, people like us who aren't, like, you know, ex-military trained athletes, like, you know, like the top, like, 2% of, like, human specimens. At least I'm not. I mean, Graham's pretty decent shape. But, uh, you know, I mean, I got too much of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trade-off, folks. It's a trade-off. <laughs> earthly pleasure is outer space, you know. Exactly. The garden of earthly delights. <laughs> So let's like this with something else we were talking about. We we're talking about uh, creativity, and and you you were a museum presenter. There's a lot of creativity in that. But when we talked at the um, lecture, you talked told me about this. So tell me a little bit about the adventure bandana and how you came up with this idea. Mm -hmm. So the adventure what? bandana, mm -hmm. um, the adventure bandana story will come after. I thank you for having me. Oh on yes. The show. Oh, thank you. This is for you. Oh my goodness. I am. Uh, I was not. We didn't rehearse this. <laughs> oh wow. Never underestimate your band. <laughs> <laughs> a true page turner. Oh, you cut off the grammaticus part. That's because it's not about me. Uh, it's about you. Thank you for having me on the show. Oh. Uh, oh, this wait a minute. You made this as a one-off print for me. This is a accompanying product to the Adventure Bandana. Oh, good. And this is your gift. For oh, family. thank you so much. Thank this you. Fantastic. Yeah. Put this somewhere where we can, we can see it. Um, yeah. Yeah, that we didn't rehearse either. So where it's gonna? No, go that's fine. I may be out of camera. It's TBD. So we'll like cover up my "If you act like sheep, don't blame the shepherd," which is one of my favorite, favorite quotes by um, Rumi, the Persian poet. And then on the other side is the other part, which is. You cannot tame lions, so wake up and roar. Roar. roar! How was that? That's pretty good. <laughs> I gotta get you a zoo membership, so I'll put that right here. And we didn't, know, we did not um, practice. So anyway, stand by, folks. This is. Will this make the cut? Ah, I got it. Oh, there we go. That worked. Perfect. All right, good. So. So the adventure bandana yes. is a product that I've had in my back pocket for probably let's see it's 2023 right now it started in about like 2015 oh wow yeah so i had made just a couple bandanas bleach dyed just for funsies and then i was taking a lot of road trips at the time mm -hmm. so i would bring these bandanas with me and they ended up coming in handy one of my favorite uses of them actually is when you're driving mm -hmm. And the sun is coming down on just one part of your body. Yes. To cover it with a bandana. Yes. So, so your the, leg doesn't burn exactly. off. Exactly. Yeah. So the nature of the adventure bandana was symbiotic with me adventuring. And I started to think, well, what am I learning on these trips? And a couple of things that I learned on the trips was um, to just go for it, you know, to to commit to the to the um, endeavor. And I started compiling these um, little blurbs of information. And back in, let's see, this would have been 2019, late 2019. And then really in 2020, um, I created the official adventure bandana with the package, with the hand dyed uh, bandana, and then the name tag. Yes. Um, Pat's Bravery. And all the information about those um, little blurbs of how to be brave packaged into one product. Right. So, so when you go out and buy this, and you can because we're going to put it right there in the description box. So click on that. $20 can be yours. <laughs> and uh, not only do you get this, 
But you have set up a kind of like daily reminder of like here, here's the process. Here's a process on how to increase your level of bravery. And it's how many days is it? So the adventure bandana comes with nine practical bits of advice on how to be brave. Very and cool. then I have other products and um, creations that do send out via email and uh, how to be brave, how to live your life as an adventure. So it's yeah, delightful. Grammakiss.com. And then after, well, I don't want to spoil it, but there are surprises sometimes too. Yeah. So I got a, full of surprises. Got, a surprise, <laughs> got a surprise email the other day. And I'm like, wait a minute. It's been more than nine days. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha email. Exactly. It was the gotcha email. I love that. Absolutely love that. Yeah. But it's funny. I was, well, I don't know if it's funny, but it, it's a weird coincidence that I was watching something about Albert Camus and he was talking about how to be happy in life, right? And uh, one of the things he talked about was travel. And he talks about like, you know, travel to him is about fear. It's about conquering, dealing with fear, you know, like the unknown. What's going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen. What happens when I get there? I don't know. Is there going to be food? Is there going to be water? Is there going to be sky? Yeah, probably. But, you know, there's that anticipation, that unknown element. And with any new adventure, with anything that we do, you know, I mean, I had friends that we were in kind of an adventure club when we were in our really? 20s, you know, skydiving, hang gliding, all what? kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah, <laughs> all the stuff that people were like, you know, well, we had a friend and he went to the military and he was jumping on airplanes. And, you know, he was, he was learning how to do um, repair helicopters, but also then he uh, turned out he got some training to learn how to fly them. And part of it was rappelling out of them and jumping out of them. And I was like, I don't, you know, I'm in college. I can't just quit college, go join. I guess I could have. Uh, but I wasn't going to at that point, but I was like, well, I want to do some of this stuff. So my friends and I, we researched a place to go, um, sky, um, parachuting. It wasn't skydiving, it was parachuting. There's a difference, but, um, and we did it. And then some of us went on to do that. Like a one friend who got 150 jobs or something crazy like that. And, uh, I stopped at five. <laughs> I started doing the math. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm going to try something else. And then, you know, rock climbing, rappelling, all kinds of like interesting outdoor kind of what people would call risky sports. In fact, I have a friend who, you know, a lot of times people are trying to figure out what their career is going to be in their 20s. And a lot of people try to sell like life insurance and things of this nature because, you know, if you have a good personality and you know your friends and family, the life insurance companies will be like, okay, we'll run through your friends and family and maybe you'll stay or maybe you won't. So she was running through her friends and family and she came to me and she said, do you participate in any of the following activities? <laughs> skydiving hang gliding rock or what was it rock climbing or ice climbing and i said three out of four and she said i can't sell you insurance. <laughs> <laughs> i said oh sorry but um anyway but the life well lived yes well survived yeah, yeah mm -hmm. i survived a lot of stuff mm -hmm. so um but we were talking about creativity and we were talking about adventure but but back to creativity so this process took five years mm -hmm. yeah, to come to fruition yeah. so sometimes ideas are like that aren't they mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. it's i think of um creativity as kind of like um becoming a parent in which you have to let your brain child incubate and um sometimes it's got a personality of its own you know it comes from you but it's also got a life of its own and you need to give it the resources it needs to grow and um, time. Mm. Well, I get talked about that in Breakfast of Champions. Relate in the novel, his character was there, but he said they're kind of like on rubber bands. He can sort of kind of guide them, but they kind of have their own elasticity of what they're going to do. And sometimes they do things that he didn't expect as the writer, and they surprise him. But I, I, I know what you mean as far as like long projects. Um, this YouTube channel I started in 2016 just as a, a one-off kind of thing. And now it's, you know, seven years later and it's like my main pursuit, you know, my main yeah. artistic pursuit. Yeah. But it's, um, you know, and again, like it evolves, like you said, like a child, it grows um, and it kind of gets its own momentum. Mm -hmm. You find out what the audience likes and then you're like, well, maybe I should do more of that. You know, and then you push back like, oh, maybe I, I really want to do this. And mm -hmm. then it's... Um, Gotta show the tough love sometimes. <laughs> So you have any other ideas that you're kind of working on that you want to um, talk about? Yeah. Okay, cool. So right now, 
I have a project out called Perspectance, and I am the artist of the month at a local print shop called Copies of Carson. Mm. Fantastic. How do you become artist of the month? So, big shout out, first of all, to the Copies of Carson team. Rebecca, Alan, Mackenzie, Jade, Don, Brad, and uh, the Copies of Carson Angel Bugsy. You know, big shout out to you guys and go visit Copies of Carson we'll down below. you guys down below. Southside Net. Yeah. And um, I was just, uh, you know, in the right place at the right time and they offered me the opportunity. And so my art is up there. Uh, the project is called Perspectance. It's more of a fine art series than it is a commercial endeavor like the Adventure Bandana is. Right. And so um, is that where you made this? Uh, I believe I did print that at Copies of Carson, actually. Cool. Yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, Perspectance being a fine art series, it's more about the idea. And um, the idea is that a core problem that I see is separation. So separation from the world around us, separation from the people around us, and separation most detrimentally from ourselves. So perspectives is how I bring attention to unity. And a big word that has come up in my life recently is the word connection. So by bringing attention to unity, I hope to connect people, actually, excuse me, I hope to remind people they're already connected to yes. the world around them, the people around them, and most importantly, connected to themselves. It's so important. I, I think that's my new, um, I, you know, I hate to use the word mission because it makes it sound like it's, but, but what my new intention is, uh, you know, to, you know, and that's what we've been doing a lot on the interviews that I do on here is talking about creativity, but creating a, a community, even if it's a loosely knit community, but a community of people that can access each other's ideas, either through watching these kinds of videos or uh, by contacting each other through you know these videos and and on in the comments it's one thing I love about YouTube is that it's such a positive social media community compared to possibly other platforms and and it's it's you know creators understand each other they help each other but there's a really big effort uh, by just YouTube uh, to allow creators of you know creatives which is becoming a new word um to to do their thing to to be out there to get the stuff out there because before there were a lot of barriers for people you know you had to apprentice you had to have sort of like an academic pedigree maybe or uh, or some kind of like pedigree in the art community in order to get your stuff hung in galleries and you know and that still exists but now there are other outlets, you know, for musicians, writers, uh, you know, graphic artists. Um, you know, I was just at Comic Con with my wife. Um, you know, and I, I bought a graphic novel, which I have sitting over there, um, which is absolutely beautiful. Met the writer; he signed it for me. I'm one of the first pe people to ever read it. You know, like he's like, this just came out like well, three days ago, yeah. and I'm like, it's mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I will support you, yes. you're a writer. You know, the art is wonderful. I didn't meet the artist, but it's absolutely gorgeous. And it's you know that's the type of thing where I'm finding like you know that's what I want to be part of. You know, I want to be part of a community that's greater than myself, and I want to um, I want to enjoy the company of others. You know, people talking about positive, creative outlets. Yeah, know? yeah. Yeah, and that's why you're here. And to that, mm -hmm. I'll drink my water. Sure. Here, I choose with water because it's holy to me. Mm. Water's life. I'm 98% water. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I know what you said about, like, community because that's part of why I moved to Pittsburgh is because it's such a connected city. Yeah, we were talking about Southside. Southside South is Side, a yeah. wonderful place in uh, in Pittsburgh. There's this really great place called Slacker. I have this ring. I should show you actually. It's a uh, it's an amazing. I should have got my props ready. Beep. Yeah, we're gonna like bleep this out. Yeah. <laughs> Cuts to us like like falling everywhere, like the camera's falling and like <laughs> high pitched squeals and static. The microphone dropped. <laughs> <on the ceiling. laughs> So this is the graphic novel that I bought for How's that $7. Pythia. Pythia, okay. Yeah, about ancient Greece. 
Yes, shout out Greeks. And this is this wonderful ring I bought at... Um, oh, look at that. I know, right? People are like, oh my God, I love your ring. I'm like, $7 in slacker. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. They're like, that's a sapphire. I'm like, it's nice glass. Nice uh, But, you know. I'm Greek, so this is like... Oh, life. cool. This is like, oh, wow. Well, that. maybe you're going home with that too. TBD. You never know. I'm, I I'm not going to flip I through. I I'm not going to ruin it. it. I haven't read it yet, uh -huh. so yeah. But, uh, yeah, but this is the type of thing that, you know... Happens in the city. Yeah, like, I have his um, email address, so, like, you know, I'll contact him and, and give him, like, honest critique about what I thought about it. And actually, I just started with a... Well, I don't know how... If this is the right place to say it, but there's a possibility that I may have a partnership with a publishing company, so we'll see if, you know, what direction we're going to go on that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this is about you. So, Pittsburgh, why did you choose Pittsburgh? I had said before I've moved for a job, I've moved for school, and this time it was location, location, location. So I had done some like obsessive research on, I think, 48 of the 50 states and like their major metropolitan areas. And I had a couple um, requirements for the city. And what I narrowed it down to city wise was New Orleans. Mm -hmm. St. Louis, Missouri, mm -hmm. Grand Rapids, Michigan, mm -hmm. Nashville, Tennessee, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Wow. And uh, I'd been to all the places except for Pittsburgh. So a friend from college lived here, encouraged me to come down. And after she picked me up from the airport, as soon as I left her front door, I was like, this is where I'm moving. Yeah. What was the weather like that day? Like this. See, this is perfect right now. I don't know if you guys know, uh, Pittsburgh weather is um, mercurial. <laughs> <laughs> to use a kind of a thermometer analogy. But uh, it's, yeah, it's volatile. You could have four seasons in one day here. I'll give you that. So part of the reason that I'm built for this is because I'm from Quincy, Illinois, which is on like a very similar latitude line to Pittsburgh. I think it's only like, I don't know, I don't know the degrees, but right. it's it's just south of the same latitude line as Pittsburgh. And the other thing about Quincy is that it's also on a river. So Midwest till I die. Yeah. Let's just put it that way. There's something about us. I mean, I that's what I consider. I consider Pittsburgh to be uh, kind of a Midwest city. So. I know that a lot of times it's mid-Atlantic, they say, but it's not. It's, it's, it's more on the other side of the mountains, you know, and other people say it's the northernmost city of Appalachia. You know, there's some of that, but it's, it, it's, it really, if you have to, like, use broad strokes, the people here, like, if you go to Milwaukee, or you go to um, Des Moines, or if you go to um, anywhere, like, pretty much until you get to the Rocky Mountains, it's what you see is what you get here. People don't, we don't put on airs. I mean, like, I like dressing up, but, like, um, but, but. People are pretty much, you know, like you, you stop people on the street and you're like, hey, you know how to get to the uh, thingy and you don't have, to, you can have a 20 minute conversation. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it's, I mean, that's how we met, right? Yeah. It's just strangers at the same place, the same time. I figure, you know, when you go to events like that, you're going to meet people that you have at least one thing in common. <laughs> right? Yeah. They yeah. like outer space. Yeah. What's one of your favorite things about outer space? Oh, I, I you know, to me, it's the vastness. It's the sense of infinity. It's, um, it's like, when I wake up in the morning, I, I guess, like, I understand now why so many um, early religions were, like, sun-worshipping oriented religions. Because what I've found is, with my... Uh, what has happened for me career-wise, I am able to determine my schedule so I can get up when the sun gets up. And I do that. Like, and it's uh, I'm more in rhythm with like the what's going on around me naturally. But when I look at that giant blazing ball of gas in the sky when it's available, when it's not cloudy, <laughs> it's can be cloudy. <laughs> There's no doubt. You know, there's people like say things like, it's only cloudy in Seattle, but I don't even know if that's true anymore. Uh, but it's um, because it's been wonderful for the last yeah, few weeks. It's yeah. been like really pretty, pretty much perfect. That's uh, and we had some really mild winters. Uh, but uh, it's just that I'm just fascinated by. Okay, here's one thing that fascinates me. Tell me. 
This is really creepy. I think it's creepy. I think it's just. <laughs> I think it just doesn't. It's just eerie. Yeah. Like it, it. Like okay. There is absolutely no scientific reason why the moon, being the size it is, is the precise distance away from the Earth that when it's between the moon and the sun at certain times that it casts a, a perfect shadow that perfectly occults the moon at this time in history. And it's moving away from the Earth, okay? So, like, but why at this time in history? It's like when people write on Facebook, you were lucky enough to be alive at the same time as David Bowie. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm lucky enough to be, oh, and I love David Bowie, but, like, I'm lucky enough to be on Earth at the exact right time to experience that sort of thing. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. There's no reason for it. Yeah. Like, scientifically. It's not like, oh, this has to happen. Yeah. That's what's cool. And I love discovering those kinds of things about um, the world, you know? Because I'm very science-based. Mm -hmm. But I also like the idea that maybe there's a little more out there that I don't understand, mm -hmm. you know? And I don't have to understand it. I can be in awe of it and experience it, mm -hmm. you know? And, and not have to question it and put the cosines and the square <laughs> roots to it. You know what I mean? I can't do long division, so I get you <laughs> So, yeah, that's, then, that's what I'm fascinated by. Yeah, uh, what's Cosmology. cool about mm -hmm. that, too, like, um, the moon covering the sun at certain times, is also that we live in, like, a, a one-star system, and then we also have one moon. Like, there's planets that have multiple moons, and there's systems that have multiple stars, but we get one thing during the day, and then we get one thing during the night. Like, that's crazy, too. Absolutely. I mean, there's a couple of short stories. I think Asimov wrote one. It was about um, the 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 nights. There was there was a uh, planet that had like three suns, and there was and every three hundred years or something, all three suns would be on one side of the planet. So like it never experienced oh, night really? except for like this one time, you know. And what happened, you know? And so and there's so many things that I think that, you know, inspired humanity by being able to look at the night sky. Crazy. You know, like poetry, and there's so much music, it's been written about it, and so many, like, just pieces of art. I mean, obviously, Star Night, you know, by Van Gogh, but, like, that's the obvious one, but there's, there's just so much about it, and so it lets me know that I'm part of something bigger, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And the vastness, like you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I definitely want to create something as beautiful as the night sky. Like, that's a muse for me, for sure. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So Pittsburgh, outer space, creativity, all connected. Right here. Right here. <laughs> <the grand place. laughs> Manifest. <laughs> <laughs> so can we expect like a star field maybe on one of these or something like that? Oh, you'll that? just have to stay tuned. I have to stay tuned. Yeah, you got to okay. stay tuned. Very good. Yeah, Perspectives is the main project right now. Okay. Um, oh, so, so how do we learn more about that? Is there uh, yep. anything online where right, we can link to, like we put in the yeah, description Yeah, grammarkiss.com. Most okay. importantly, though, just show up in person. I mean, Copies of Carson is a great store. Yeah. They're super awesome. It's a local Pittsburgh store, so supporting them supports the city. And again, like the connectedness of everyone here. It's like, won't you be my neighbor? It's like, to give that to the city, I think, is is from the heart. And showing up in person, I think, would be would mean a lot to them. Beyond just my artist of the month, like it's an ongoing program. So the people before me were really cool. Like with the, uh, I won't, I won't like spoil anything. But um, they liked Nightmare Before Christmas, and I'm a big Nightmare Before Christmas fan. So mm -hmm. like their art was really good too. And so very cool. Yeah, the imagination of Tim Burton. My goodness. Speaking of creativity, I mean, like claymation. <laughs> buddy <laughs> um i was thinking about this when you were asking about the adventure bandana because it did come to fruition in like the 2020 era yeah what was the pandemic like for you so the first as the first phase of it right was okay we're gonna be off work for two weeks oh no it's gonna be six weeks yeah and then when that happened it was like okay i had this novel manuscript that i wrote in my 20s um, I went down to Nags Head in the Outer Banks and ran a beach house and I wrote a uh, first draft in two weeks. And then um, it sat for years. I would occasionally pull it out and do something with it, but it sat. And um, I said, I took, I was walking um, 
Yeah, basically, what could we do? Uh, we had a pottery studio that we were kind of like cleaning up and tidying up because that was going to close. Uh, and then, uh, well, that was a little bit later, I guess. But we were doing stuff there. But other than that, I didn't, you know, it was like, okay, you're not going to work. You got six weeks here. If you don't publish this book, you're never going to do it. It's basically the universe saying, here, here's your chance. You complained your whole life about not having enough time, and here's the time, right? So I published, I self-published the book on Kindle uh, Direct Press. So you, I'll put that in the comments too. You can buy that. Congratulations. I, well, thank you. But what I did was, I didn't go back and re-edit it. I published it as it was written when I was 23 years old. That's bold. There's so many mistakes in there. <laughs> but the but that's who I was then. Yeah. If I went back and I redid it, it would be who I was on top of what I was. And that's not what I wanted to do. What I wanted to do was just keep it that voice. It, I don't know if it's right, wrong, in between. I don't know what. All I know is it's there and that's out there now. And and I, I learned something about perfectionism. Because totally. I'm a perfectionist. I've always had that issue, but I'm less of a perfectionist now. It's like sometimes you got to let it go. It's not doing it. I had a friend who read, I, I've had people read it over the years. I had a friend that read it. He worked in, uh, he was an actor. He was in Hollywood. He did some writing. He said, it's not doing you any good sitting in that drawer. It's like, so it's got some problems. Publish it. Who knows? Throw it out there. See what happens. You know, submit it. You know, make it, make it another screenplay. Do whatever you, you know, just do, you know, it shouldn't just sit there. And, um, now I don't wait until something is perfect before I, I let it go now, you know, because I know it's never going to be perfect, you know, and my idea of perfect is going to change and you can always come back to it, you know, you can always come back to it and, and uh, use whatever you've learned in the meantime to and apply that to it if you really wanted to, you know, so yeah, so that's what I did uh, at the beginning, you know, that was my big like I gotta do this, or I will. I feel like I will have wasted my pandemic. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, speaking of bravery, like putting that out as it is, is so cool. It's so cool that you did that. Thanks. Yeah. And then, um, like you said about um, perfectionism, like that's a big lesson that I've learned to kind of combat also. But um, taking the opportunity to like. The pandemic because it's so different for everyone and there was a lot of bad things like i mean literally it was uh what's the word i'm looking for what is the word that i would use to describe that it was a global catastrophe that's what i would say obviously but to find the good in it and do that in honor of the people who don't have that you didn't waste it. That's where this podcast started. This whole podcast started with a bunch of people. I worked in the restaurant business. It started with, I was going to interview a bunch of my restaurant friends. And then I realized, I know writers, artists, actors. Like, I know a bunch of people that are doing creative things during this period. And that's what I think is fascinating, is that now we're going to see a lot of stuff that was incubated, as you said, during that time, when people actually had, some people, I mean, don't get me wrong, there were plenty of people that were overworked during that, unfairly, because, you know, the medical system, the emergency systems, that kind of stuff. But for other people who had to take time out and kind of shift gears and think, like, what am I, what am I doing? What's my purpose? Why am I here? Oh, now I, I can actually, like, do my hobbies, or maybe I can devote a little more time to something creative. I think that we're going to see a lot of those ideas come to fruition now. Uh, and you're already starting to see it. Mm -hmm. you know? And there's also, um, it was a trial. It was a, you know, it was a, a period of um, stress and for a lot of people, trauma and change. And out of all those things comes catharsis, comes good art, you know, like all those things, positivity as well. And that's what I'm trying, I think, is one of the reasons I'm focusing mostly on positivity I've always kind of skewed towards that anyway, but I think it's essential now because there are a lot of people who are still traumatized by the events that happened. I mean, we lost people, 
you know, I lost people and it's, and it, and we're, we're all kind of like, a lot of us are, are kind of like recovering from that, that global, like you said, that global catastrophe. But I think, like you said, we can focus on a couple different ways. And if we focus on the positive possible aspects of it, I think we can't go far wrong. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, that's um, what Perspectives is about. It's that the notion of unity that there can be two people who live in the exact same place, but they can live in completely different realities. And my only hope is to heal people with my creativity. Like, that's why I feel I was put on this earth. And you said the word mission. Heck yeah, let's James Bond it up. Like, <laughs> I'm on a mission here, you know, to, like, heal people with my creativity. My life is creativity. The power is inside me. I have created masterpieces. I have mastered my craft. That's what exists in my lifetime. And that's what I'm going to do with it. To help others. That's my destiny. Is to help others. Awesome. And your mission, should you choose to accept it, <laughs> is to click on the links below and buy something Smash from Smash that family. like button. Smash that like button. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> do whatever YouTuber begs you to do. The algorithm wants to hear those words. Uh, no, they... Uh, no, I, I agree. I think I think it's I think that's the other thing about when you talk about being bold. I think it's bold to say things like that because a lot of times people want false humility and they want like this kind of like oh you know but but really what I'm about it's I, I just recently read this quote by Plato where he said, you know, we do good things because it makes us stronger, but it also inspires others to do good things. Right. So I'm not hiding it anymore. Like, that's what I'm about. You know, um, if you don't particularly care for that, that's fine. But that's what I'm about. So if you want to, like, come here and, like, get positive and have fun and, like, enjoy life, this is where you come. Mm -hmm. yep. And I can tell that you're sort of that way as well. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I'll use my powers for good. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Well, on that note, I don't know what to say. Um, I think we've had an amazing conversation here. Hopefully, we'll have many more. Yes. And I look forward to... Uh, to I'm going to go down to Southside. I haven't been to Southside. Southside now? Yeah, in a month or so. So, I need to get back down there. Yeah. 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 Respectance at Copies at Carson. Um, on the outro, just always remember you're part of it all. Uh, to all the boys who passed me up, hi. <laughs> Look at him now. And uh, peace be to earth. I have nothing yet. Peace. <laughs> and cut. Oh, I'm